Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I would like to introduce into risk and return calculations in R for the stock market. For this video, I planned the following. I would like to show how log returns are calculated. First of all, daily log returns. Then how to convert them into annual log returns. Then I would like to show how to calculate daily volatilities and again how to convert them into annual volatilities. Of course we're going to plot that too. I now switch to our studio and then we start. All right, now we have arrived in our studio and of course I have prepared a little before the recording of this video. I gave uh, um, a headline, risk and return analysis, and I coded all the data retrieval because I already made a video on data retrieval using the QuantMod package. Nevertheless, I would like to show you briefly how that works. What you will need is the QuantMod package. If it is not installed on your PC, you will need to do that using the installed packages command and hand over quantmod to this command. Of course, it is already installed on my computer, so I'm not going to start this. I'm going to put this back into the command line, uh, command line. Then we have to run the library command to start the quantmod package. That's done now. What we will need too is an environment, so I. Uh, apply the new environment command, new.env, and I create a new environment, env.stock, just running that. Oops. There it is. And this is a sub-environment of the global environment. So what we see on the right-hand side is the global environment, and we now created a sub-environment to the global environment. The get symbols command here with a capital S, that is important, um, is the central command of the QuantMod package for data retrieval. We hand over a vector of tickers. Well, tickers are the identifiers uh, at the stock exchange. And here we have 30 tickers. Those are the DEX 30, so the German stock index um, uh, companies. So what do we see here? VNA is Vonovia, for example, DBK, Deutsche Bank, LHA, Lufthansa, and so on and so forth. So uh, that's it. Then we hand over the source and we're going to download all the stock market data from Yahoo Finance. Our time series shall start at 1st of January 2017 and they shall end at 6th, 6th June of 2020. Um, we want to have daily um, stock prices and they should be stored in the newly created environment. So I'm going to run this command now, and it takes a few seconds because that's quite a lot of data. All right, that's it. So the next line, I just run this line to show you what happens. Now we have this XTS object here, and this XTS object contains uh, the adjusted close prices of all 30 um, stocks. How does this command do it? All right, here we have the add command. The add command is used to fetch any adjusted price out of the, the environment. And we are using the eApply command to do this for all 30 of them. So eApply applies the add command to all objects that are stored in the environment stock. Of course, 
using these using this eapply command would end up in 30 time series. And we now want to merge them into just one XTS object. Accordingly, we have to use the merge command. And we have to use the merge command 30 times. That's why we apply do call. Okay, so now we have all the data in our computer the way we would like to have it. Let's start with the log returns. All right, so we are going to make a new XTS log returns object. And log returns are the differences, the daily differences of the locked stock prices. So we need the differences of the lock of the stock prices. And we have to hand over the lag, and the lag is one day, of course. So running this line will end up in a new XTS object. Let's just click on that. And here we see that the first line is an A because we can't look at the previous day there. There is no previous day. That will end up in an NA. Nevertheless, on 3rd of January, we saw at, this is Adidas. Adidas had a 1.3% uh, drop in stock price. Uh, Volkswagen had a 1.9% rise that day. BMW is 0.9% increase. So this is what we see here. Now to get rid of the NAs, we can do the following. NA.omit. And let's have another look in there. And the NAs are gone, but this, the numbers are still the same, so everything is fine here. Okay, of course, these are daily returns. So the next that we want to have are annual returns. And we need a little step in between. We need to calculate the mean return. So I'm going to create a vector now. And why is this a vector? Of course, it is not an XTS object anymore because we are taking the mean of the whole time series. But this is a vector for all 30 stocks. So, how do we do that? Um, we're going to use the s apply command. The s apply command can be applied to data frames and XTS objects, and it will return a vector. So, s apply on XTS log returns. And of course, we have to hand over a function, and that is the mean. So we're going to apply the function mean to all objects inside this XTS object. Let's run this and we can have a look at the vector mean returns. And here it is. Of course, they are pretty small because these are daily returns. So the mean is the mean daily return. That's a pretty small number. To have an annual return, to have an annual return, we now use the exponent of the vector mean returns times 250 minus 1. And let's have a look at those annual returns now. And here they are. So Adidas had a 90.9% 
increase, Volkswagen 4% increase, BMW, BMW um, a 6% 6 per, a 6 uh, drop, and so on and so forth. Fine. So that's enough for the returns, but now we go over to risk. So, uh, daily volatility, volatility. Okay, again, we need a vector and we call it daily vola. And of course, again, we as apply across XTS log returns. But the function now is, of course, not mean, but standard deviation. Because the volatility is defined as the standard deviation of the daily log returns. Well, now we see here that we have a vector daily vola with those volatilities. So we have a nearly 2% vola in Adidas, a 2.1% vola in, what's that, a uh, Volkswagen, and so on and so forth. All right, of course we can now directly calculate the annual vola. And that we do that by taking the daily vola times the square root of 250. Why the square root of 250? That's the question now. 250, because we have 250 trading days in Germany roughly each year. And the volatility is additive. Uh, no, the, the, the variance is additive. We could simply multiply the variance by 250. But the standard deviation is not. So the standard deviation is the square root of the volatility, and that's why we have to multiply by the square root here too. And there it is. Of course, if we like to have variance, our annual variance, we can have that too. in the power of 2. And there's our annual variance. Great! Now, the best idea to uh, that we can have now is to take a look at some plots. So first of all, I would like to plot a histogram. I use the standard histogram here for the log returns. And of course, we have to decide for one of the companies, well, SAP is fine. SAP, why not? And I just allow the computer to use a, a, a few more breaks. let's say 40 breaks, and let's plot that. Oh wow, that looks pretty nice. Um, as we know, um, stock market returns are not normally distributed, although it looks like this, but this is not a normal distribution and it would fail any test on normality. Why that? Because we see a lot of outliers here, here, and those outliers are more often than normality would predict. The same is true for the middle columns here. So a non-movement of the stock prices is also a lot more often than normality would predict. But here in the sides, just like here and here, um, these are fewer than normality would predict. This is called fat tails because they have fat tails on the lower and on the upper side. What else can we plot? We can plot, of course, a risk and return plot. That's pretty nice. Um, 
I use the usual one. So vec annual returns and vec annual vola. Oh, that's that's an unusual one. So let me just switch them so that I have the vola on the x-axis. And here's the vola on the x-axis. And this is what we see in each and every textbook if we have the vola on the x-axis and the annual return on the epsilon axis. Please allow me two more minutes to do another plot. I will use the ggplot library for that. ggplot2. Of course, if this is not installed on your computer, install the packages and ggplot2. But of course, it is already done on my computer, so if not done, um, I'm not going to reinstall it, of course. Well, um, we use the ggplot command. We have to hand over the data. Oh, we don't have a data frame here. We have to we have to hand over data frame. So data dot frame uh, vector um, annual returns and vector annual vola. So now we have a data frame. Uh, we have to hand over the aesthetics. Uh, on the x-axis, we want to have the vector annual vola, and on the epsilon axis, we would like to have the vector of annual returns. That's fine. And we have to add a layer geom point without anything. And what I would like to have is um, data, uh, so, so, so labels, geom text, is it? It is text, AES label is names of vector annual returns. Um, we have to adjust where they are plotted. Uh, just a little v just two. We don't need any h just, but the size should be pretty small. And let's run this. Okay, that doesn't work. Um, so I have to prepare that before. No problem. And I just put the names in here. Oh, no, here. And there it is. All right. So what do we see? We do see the VOLA, so the risk, and we see the return. And we see here Linda. Uh, we see here Vanovia. We see here SAP, Adidas. But we also see the low performer Deutsche Bank, Continental, Tires, and so on and so forth. So I hope this you enjoyed this video. Thank you for listening and see you in the next video.